My father and other men would have went out and left their families crying, probably hungry, for that road alone, for the road. I may be a socialist in certain people's eyes, but I never fought socialists. I still fought unions. We felt it was our duty to vote loyalist and to keep Ulster loyalist. I'd be feared to go anywhere, you know. I just stuck to my own road. And the loyalist people in the Shankle Road are still united. They are still strongly loyalist people attached to the British Parliament. For all the violence that has been, I don't see any progress towards what certain people want to bring about, mainly a socialist republic. And I still see as much opposition to it as there's ever been. The Shankill Road people are British, and uh, this is something that has been engendered into them. We're proud to be red, white, and blue. In the Beardo Bar on Belfast Shankill Road, every night is music night. For seven years now, these people have been at the centre of the North's bloodiest violence. Just a year ago, five customers were machine gunned to death in this very bar. But undaunted, the music spells out a no surrender message of loyalty to Queen and Kingdom from a most loyal community. My father and other men would have went out and left their families crying, probably hungry, for that road alone, for the road. So they would. They believed in the road, they believed in the union. So they did. And they would have sacrificed everything for that. So they would. Now it doesn't happen to be that. No, but don't uh, talk to me as a politician. Talk to anyone, talk to any of the people on the Shankill Road. The Shankill Road's only a name now. It changes everywhere. Oh. I'm not saying the people has changed. It's just the troubles and everything. It's not just the same. The Lord was still always Shankill to me. My father is people is in his house over a hundred years. Over a hundred years they're there. My father's in at 65. Still there. He's still there, and I'm still there. There's the troubles which are caused by the violence, and there's the troubles which are caused by the whole process of redevelopment. On the Shankill, in fact, a lot of people feel, and this was the reason the Save the Shankill campaign was set up in the first place, that the bulldozer has done as much, if not more, damage than the bomb. Divis Flats, synonymous with militant republicanism, dominate the new houses of the lower Shankill. Two communities which have been at each other's throats for generations lie huddled side by side. One factor common to both communities is the squalid cluster of houses in the terraced back streets. In 1973, 95% of the houses in the Lower Shankill were deemed unfit for habitation. Most of the area's houses have no baths or inside lavatories. Many are without hot water. A community brought up in the myth that they were the chosen people is beginning to have second thoughts. Their road, their community is being changed, and they don't like it. I think it has affected old people and young people terribly, because the old people depended on neighbour going in to make a wee cup of tea and for to go a message, and especially in the winter when they needed their fire lit, when they needed a wee bit of comfort, and especially late on at nights for frightened anybody coming to their doors. Those people were all disheartened. Those people were moved and made to go. The flats, it was just like a, just like a big block to them. They had neither could get up nor down. And the price of living here, of what they want for houses, just doesn't meet our means. If we want to go out and buy our children or their clothes and feed them and keep them the way that you should be, we can't do it and pay these big rents for the new houses. All we wanted here was a wee terraced house. We could have did without a garden. They could have modernised the houses that we were in, put a bathroom, extended the working kitchen. That would have been good enough for us. 
From one point of view, the first shots of the present troubles were fired here, outside the Malvern Arms, just off the Shankill, ten years ago. A young Catholic was murdered, and a new Protestant folk hero was born. Protestant militarism, dormant for years, found new life and encouragement in the Shankill back streets. But the sporadic savagery of those early years has now so spread that hardly a household in the Shankill has remained unaffected by the violence.